1948 was a very special year in the history of Soviet music. Right after the war, uh, Soviet composers were actually having a very good time. Uh, they were getting a lot of prizes, uh, they were performed a lot. Prokofiev and Shostakovich were the two major Soviet composers um, at the very top of the hierarchy. Suddenly it all changed. In 1948, on the 10th of February, uh, there was a party resolution uh, issued against formalist music. And what was formalist music? Um, it was basically music that had various shades of modernism in it. And uh, six major Soviet composers, the absolute best of them, uh, Prokofiev, Shostakovich, Miskovsky, Kachaturian, Shebalin, and Popov were on the list uh, of the main formalists. They were denounced in the, all the papers, uh, their music wasn't performed, uh, they weren't commissioned any new works, mm. and it, had the, it sent shockwaves across uh, all Soviet music culture, and not just music culture, everyone um, couldn't really understand what was happening. So what was happening was actually the result of the Cold War just started uh, and uh, it was a desire of Stalin to bring all the loyalties back from the, um, the West you know whatever allegiances people might have for things abroad uh, back to things Russian yeah, so composers were supposed to write music that was more Russian and that was very accessible to the people the impact of this 1948 decree can really hardly be overstated what for us is now just a phrase in a history textbook was a huge emotional watershed moment for um, the Russian intelligentsia of the time. It really shook the society and especially um, the composers during that year. Uh, a renowned Russian pianist Lev Naumov states in his autobiography, it was devastating. At a meeting held in the Great Hall of Moscow Conservatory, Shabalin, who was mentioned in the decree, refused to plead guilty, showing incredible bravery. His students surrounded him, silently crying. This decree aimed to destroy the lives of the very best Russian composers. The author of the decree was Andrei Zhdanov. In 1946, he was appointed by Stalin to be the director of Soviet Union cultural policy and uh, immediately he issued a devastating attack on two leading Soviet writers, Zoshenko and Akhmatova. They both were condemned for formalistic nature of their works, the bourgeois thematic of their output, and that meant the end of both of their careers. Two years later, it was the musicians turned to be put in their place. In the official Communist Party circles, Miskovsky was known for distancing himself from the heated debates at the Composers' Union. It was even stated that Miskovsky didn't write any articles or get involved in any of the public debates, and that his only means of expression was writing music in the silence of his study. I find it very interesting that this statement was not meant as a compliment. It was, in fact, a criticism of Miaskovsky's lack of commitment to Stalin's regime. Miaskovsky's second cello sonata in A minor was written in the years of 1948-49 and is a beautifully crafted and very earnest piece of music. The second movement of this sonata evokes a sense of noble lyricism. I feel that the Russian soul is inherently connected to this relationship with Mother Earth, at the same time combined with a fervent um, belief in fate and the power of fate. In the second movement particularly, you feel Miskovsky's longing for these vast landscapes and the emotion that is connected to them. The composer Anatoly Lyadov taught both Prokofiev and Miskovsky in the St. Petersburg Conservatory years before the revolution of 1917 and the civil war which followed changed the landscape of the country forever. Lyadov was a master of orchestral color, master of form. His language was always tonal. He was the person Diaghilev contacted first when Diaghilev needed somebody to write the score of the Firebird. 
the composer Diaghilev called next was Igor Stravinsky, and that was the start of Stravinsky's meteoric rise to fame. The prelude which we recorded was originally written for piano in 1885 and was transcribed for cello a year later, and that prelude is marked with this beautiful sense of uh, honest and self-consciousness. Shaporin's style is emphatically tonal, but it's tonal in a self-conscious way. It has to be said that he never ever had any problems with Stalin's regime just because he never wrote a note which would deviate from the style which Stalin uh, considered desirable for the people of the Soviet Union. If we look at the aria, the fourth piece out of the five, uh, this is really like a mini poem which uh, conveys this emotion of lament and despair and that emotion of course was very present in the Russian music which uh, directly followed the Second World War. The estimated casualties of the Soviet Union in the Second World War were 26 million people. On the 22nd of June 1941 Soviet Union was attacked by the Nazi Germany army and they changed the lives of everybody, both sides of the border, forever. Prokofiev was, just as later Shostakovich, was evacuated. During the war he wrote his first violin sonata. The finale of that sonata, the very ending of it, uh, was described by him as uh, wind over the graveyard. And even though his cello sonata was written in 1949, uh, four years after the war ended, in the ending of the first movement of that sonata, I could hear exactly the same thing. There's suddenly a silence, a terrifying silence in C major, which is the silence of death. And uh, those pages of Prokofiev's writing, they could serve perhaps as a message to the future generation. Uh, a message of somebody who lived through the war and saw people dear to him perish in that war. I find it very interesting that Prokofiev's cello sonata in C major was actually directly inspired by the premiere of Miaskovsky's second cello sonata. Before Prokofiev's cello sonata could be premiered, by Richter and Rostropovich on the 1st of March 1950. It had to be played at the Composers' Union and there they had to decide whether this was a new masterpiece or whether it was a work that was hostile to the spirit of the people. The finale of this sonata is appropriately optimistic as was required by Stalin's regime. In the context of overcoming the terrors of World War II, this optimism could be interpreted as an affirmation of humans' ability to create rather than destroy. These rather harsh times for Soviet music lasted until the death of Stalin in March 1953, and they could have ended earlier, in fact, because Zhdanov died in 1948, uh, so these policies also could have been curtailed much earlier. Uh, but there were rival composers to the six uh, that had been denounced that didn't want that to happen, that enjoyed their uh, place in power and uh, actually perpetuated the, these policies for much longer than, than they should have lasted. But nevertheless, gradually, uh, composers started to be forgiven or re rehabilitated. Miskovsky, for example, got a Stalin Prize for his cello sonata just before he died and Prokofiev and Shostakovich also got Stalin prizes, which was a sign that they weren't formalist anymore.